back to the channel. Welcome to Paper and Moose. If you are new to the channel, thanks for joining. Today is a little bit different type of video than what I normally do. What I normally do is I go to auctions, estate sales, flea markets, on the hunt for ephemera. I love ephemera. I love paper. I love researching paper. But I also love pretty much anything else that's vintage, especially holiday decor. I resell some items. I research most items. And then I keep some items for myself to add to my personal collection. For today though, um, we're going to be doing a little bit of testing. Uh, about a month or two months ago, I purchased this box of billiard balls at an auction. I noticed that they were a little bit different. The colors were different. Um, there is some cracking. So I thought, hmm, these are kind of different billiard balls than the ones that you normally see with pool tables. A lot of... Um, YouTube viewers in the comments suggested that maybe these are made of Bakelite. So I thought, hey, let's test and find out. So what is Bakelite? Bakelite was invented in 1907 by Leo Bakelin, who was a chemist. And this was the first type of a plastic that was invented that was a true um, synthetic resin. So because of its durability, it actually replaced a lot of other materials such as shellac and hard rubber in some industry standards and also in household appliances. Let me get my notes here. <laughs> in, 19, uh, in the 1930s, uh, cast Bakelite was made and that is where you get a lot of the Bakelite costume jewelry and a lot of the novelties. They would use Bakelite for handles for silverware, knives, all sorts of things, knobs on toasters. So, um, you know, Bakelite really was a craze and it has remained a craze for collectors. Collectors love Bakelite. Now to see if something is Bakelite, there are a couple different ways that you can test. Um, the first is the sound. I wish I had two, I should have thought I could have two pieces of plastic. But they say that Bakelite has a certain kind of clunk sound when you put it together. I think if you would have two pieces of Bakelite that was um, you know, jewelry or bangles, it, the sound might be a little bit clearer. But if you just find two pieces of plastic and then you have two pieces of Bakelite jewelry and you clang it together, the sound is much different. Um, there's also a feel, again, if I had Bakelite jewelry, Bakelite jewelry, which is the most common type of, I guess, um, Bakelite that's collected by collectors today, it is heavier than regular plastic jewelry. You'll notice the difference immediately. There also is the smell factor. Now this can, I guess, vary because if you have something that is dirty and you know it has years of dust or mold or you know dirt all over it, the smell might be a little bit different. But if something is Bakelite, if you rub it with your finger until it gets warm, it'll leave off this like formaldehyde kind of scent. And that is how you can also tell if it's Bakelite. But one of the most common ways to tell if something is Bakelite is using semi-chrome polish. This was actually hard to find. I thought I could just go to my local you know, hardware store and I'd be able to find it. But I went to the local hardware store. They didn't have it. I went to Walmart. They didn't have it. So, of course, off to the trusty internet. And I actually bought this off of eBay because it was cheaper than ordering off of walmart.com. So always check eBay, I do this all the time, for products that you might not be able to get readily at your local you know, hardware store or a type of store like Walmart and Target because a lot of times you can find it cheaper on the internet. So this is semi-chrome polish and what this will do, it's used to you know, polish all types of metals let me see the directions. A soft paste polish for chrome, silver, aluminum, brass, virtually any metal, cleans to a brilliant shine and leaves protective film. Made in Germany. So this is a type of polish. And, you know, it comes in this nice little tube. So you could actually, you know, if you're into Bakelite and you want to see if something is Bakelite, you could even take this to the flea market with you. Take this and some Q-tips and you can do some Bakelite testing. So the summer chrome is a pink, I don't know if you can see it, it's a pink, a light pink type of polish. And what happens when it interacts with the chemicals in Bakelite, the polish on the edge of the Q-tip will turn from a pink to a yellow. And that is what we are going to test today. So something to know also about Bakelite is if there is a wax 
or like a protective film on something, the test probably with semi-chrome will not turn out. And also if Bakelite is black, the test for semi-chrome might not turn out as well. So you might have to you know, try some of the other tests, the, the smell, the, the weight, the sound, so, to see if it is Bakelite. So let's see what colors we should use today. Now I have to be careful when I'm cleaning these because they do have a paper label on them. You can see the, this is paper. I don't know if there's any that doesn't have it. No. So let's do, we'll do a, a purple and a red. Now I haven't cleaned these yet. So I'm just going to get some warm water. Maybe we'll leave out the, the soap for now. And I just want to clean them first so it gets some of the yucky stuff off the top. Again, I want to remember to stay clear of the paper label because I don't want to ruin that. Um, there is a great product called Simply Green that I often use a lot. You know, you can dilute it as much as you want to clean items and that's a great a great product it, it works wonders on things all right so we'll clean that one up a little bit not too much but it looks it's better than what it was and let's do the red one too mm, I don't know if I want to do red yeah we'll do red now, if these didn't have the paper labels, then I would just put them right under the water, but I don't want to ruin them. And we're only going to be testing a little bit, a little area, just to see. If you do, you know, take semi-chrome with you to the flea market, I would probably just maybe kindly ask. Well, that's going to be a problem, because if you're going to ask the vendor if you can test the product to see, oh shoot, if it's Bakelite, and then it turns out to be Bakelite, they might want to up their price a little bit more. But, you know, maybe if you can do it discreetly, we'll have to see. All right, so we have those cleaned. Let me get another towel to wipe. All right, so we're gonna take some Q-tips. Side note, I bought this cute little container of Q-tips at, I think it's called Lin Lindel. It's almost the equivalent of Aldi's. There was one that just opened up in Easton, Pennsylvania, right across from Aldi's. And the place is amazing. Um, a lot of brand name items. Their bakery is cheap, like 59 cents for a donut, and they're good donuts. But this is a 300 pack of Q-tips. I think it was like a dollar. Super cute. All right, so we're gonna take the polish and I'm gonna put some on the Q-tip. I'm gonna put a little more than what you probably should just so you can see. So I don't know if you can see that pink color at all. Alrighty, moment of truth. Here we go. So you're just gonna, I'm just gonna rub on here a little bit. Mm-mm. I don't think we have a winner here, folks. I didn't turn it yellow. That's a bummer. Oh! Nope, it's still pink. Darn it. Let's wipe that off. Let's try the red one, just to be sure. I'll use a little bit less polish. This has a strong smell to it. Alrighty, let's try this again. You can see uh, 
Uh, I can't. Usually it would come out like a, a, a yellow, like a burnt mustard yellow. It, maybe it is. Maybe I had too much on, or maybe just the dirt is getting off. I, you can't, I don't know. It looks kind of. See, it, it is like a yellow, or unless it's just the red coming off of it. That one definitely looked, okay, we're gonna test one more. Let's try yellow. Let me clean this one out a little bit first. Just to get some of the dirt off. All right, let's test this area. Make sure it's clean. All right, third time's the charm. Kind of like garbage picking. <laughs> And maybe it's because these are so, I don't think dirt would. Let me try the smell test. I, I don't, I don't smell anything. One more chance. What part did I clean? This part, right? Alrighty, here we go. I don't think so. No, nope. I don't think we have winners. Cause this isn't the yellows that I've seen online when you look to see, you know, I mean, it's, it's clearly yellow. You're not having to, to guess if it is or not. Now that. I think this might just be the dirt. I don't think it's yellow. I mean, I don't think it's pink. I mean, yeah, yellow, not pink. I mean, it definitely cleans it nice, but I don't think these are Bakelite. I think these are just a really hard, I don't know. Hmm. I guess what I will have to do is now be on the hunt for a piece of Bakelite so that I can compare the testing with that. Because these aren't the, the pink, I mean the yellow that it should be. Bummer. Here I was so excited. I thought, oh yeah, it's gonna be Bakelite. Because even online when I look these up, the style is similar to those that were put online as Bakelite billiard balls. But the testing just does not seem to prove it. So again, now I'm going to have to be on the lookout for some Bakelite costume jewelry, and then I can test from there. And then we can do this again and compare so that you can see the difference of using semi-chrome for something that is Bakelite and then something that isn't. But you know, now you know, you cannot find this, at least in my Walmart, they didn't have it. It is cheaper on eBay. I think I paid $8.00 with free shipping for this tube. And then Walmart, they wanted maybe like 10 or $12 for it. So definitely save some money, which is always good, but disappointing, but you know, that's what happens. But at least now I have the semi-chrome. So if I want to test for Bakelite in the future, which I will be doing, I have this. And now onward to find Bakelite and do the test again. But in the meantime, I will just clean these up anyway and make them look all pretty. And then these will most likely go to the flea market or online, most likely the flea market. I think in a nice jar, they will look very attractive and make someone else want to buy this and use it as decor in their home. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Paper and Moose. A little bit different, but this is something that you know you have to do when you are buying and 
either selling or keeping for yourself is to run tests like this because you definitely, if you are selling, you don't want to sell something as something that it's not. Um, you don't want to have that kind of, um, I guess, following or feedback. And this way, you know, do your testing, see if it's legitimate or not. And then if it's not, just say so and people will appreciate that and they'll be more apt to probably buy from you again rather than, you know, trying to sell something that it's not, but still fun. So now I have my work cut out for me in cleaning these, finding a nice jar to put them in and going from there. So thank you all for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, tell your friends. I'll be doing, you know, other episodes that are a little bit different. I did purchase the items to restore that cart that I found in the garbage and then also some um, spray paint to start working on my glider. So I will get those rolling in the next couple of days once the weather breaks. Today is awful outside, lots of rain. So look out for those videos and look out for more flea market adventures and ephemera stories. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all have a great day and I will see you all next time.